Zach with Quantum Land Design here today. We're going to walk through how to topographically survey two different kinds of job sites, a commercial job site and roads and levees. And we'll also take a look at how to capture accurate data on stockpiles. We really only have one goal here today, and that's to help you understand topographic surveying method methods and how you can apply them on your job sites or roads. Uh, we'll take a look at data and field work management. We'll also walk through how to topo a commercial site, stockpiles, and, uh, and road and levee projects. Uh, you'll need a few basic tools, the GPS, base, and rover. You already, already operate on your project sites. Uh, you might use a robotic total station in some cases, and you'll need to make sure it's localized to site control. Uh, we're going to assume that's been taken care of before you start the topo, and then you have a good working understanding of, of how to use your field collection software. Uh, you may need a, a mount for an ATV or a vehicle for larger project sites or to save some time, and a computer or USB drive is just necessary to, to transfer the data when you're done. Just a couple things I want you to keep in mind here when you're using your equipment in the field. One is to make sure you have the rover straight and level for every shot. Uh, there's a bubble level on the rover pole, make sure you use it. Uh, some of the newer units have a tilt compensation built in and, and make sure those tilt compensation tools are calibrated correctly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out here is that it's important to have your rod height set correctly. And what that is, is the height from the base of your GPS system to the ground. So whatever that height difference is. On a typical fixed rover pole, it's, it's two meters. Uh, you'll need to make sure you have that calibrated into your system properly. And one mistake a lot of people make is they do not change that rod height setting to match uh, the type of system they're using to survey. So when you switch over to a vehicle or an ATV mount, you may need to adjust that rod height setting to match what, uh, what is actually there. Let's talk a little bit about data management. So why are you topoing the job site? Uh, what kind of information do you hope to derive from this? Are you trying to capture the entire project site so you compare cuts and fills uh, across the entire project or maybe make a cut fill map? Uh, are you trying to track production over just a certain area, say out of a pond or onto a building pad? Or maybe you just have to do an as-built survey where you have a few very specific points that you need to collect but don't necessarily need the lay of the land. Uh, you'll also need to make sure you check into site control every time. Uh, it's very important. To, uh, to verify that your equipment was uh, calibrated to the job site and accurate that day, and I like to save those points in every topo file. Uh, it's also nice to uh, start a new, a, new, uh, a new file for each topo job and put the date on it. Uh, as you survey job sites over time, it can get pretty confusing to have all the points either in one big file or several files that aren't, aren't clearly dated and, and delineated. Uh, we'll shoot grade changes. Uh, you don't necessarily need points everywhere on the job site. You need it where the grade changes so that that can be represented back in the, in the computer in the office. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And if you'll look over on the right here, you'll see uh, just a bunch of dots on the screen. Uh, that's really all you'll have when you get back to the office. So we have to understand how to be able to tie those dots together and make an accurate 3D representation of the land. So it's important to label the points. Uh, depending on your, your system, you can do that either with a, a layering system or, or point descriptions. And all you need to do is, is just keep simple labels, like flow line could mark a flow line, uh, CL could be the center line of a road, uh, TBC could be top back of curb, uh, WV could be water valve. But if we take a look at this over here, you'll see there are some close together points and they're unlabeled, so we don't really know what they are. Uh, they could be uh, some kind of ditch flow line that's important to the job site, but without a, without a clear explanation of what they are, it's, it's tough to tell unless you're the person actually on the job. Uh, not much to say about point export. Uh, any data company or, or yourself should be able to work with a proprietary, proprietary format that comes out of your, uh, your system. But uh, if you have the option to export a CSV or a text file, uh, those are universal and, and anyone should be able to work with those. Let's take a look at our first topo. Uh, this one's a commercial project. So if we take a look at the plan set here, uh, you'll notice that it has nice straight contour lines that clearly do not match what is, uh, what is there. Now we have to know there was recently some demo work done on this project site. Uh, we also have two stockpiles, uh, one of gravel that we can use on the project and another one of fines that we can use for fill that we need to calculate too. So this is a, a good candidate for a, for a topo to compare versus the final plans and, and figure out how much earth we have to move and, and what we should charge for that. All right, let's take a look at this commercial site. So you can see with the black outline here is the outline of the parking lot and the blue area is the building pad. So that's the primary working area. We also have an area to the west where the owner's letting us borrow material to help fill the building pad and parking lot area. So this gray box outlines the entire working area of the project and where we need to capture topo data to, uh, to make sure we have enough information back in the office to, uh, to determine volumes. 
The first two areas we'll work are the side entrances and along this edge of the sidewalk. Uh, to capture the side entrances here, uh, we'll just take a topo shot every few feet, just often enough to capture any major grade changes there so we can represent that, that curb line accurately. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that on both of them, and then we'll jump down along the sidewalk. Uh, the sidewalk is one of the more important areas that we're going to topo. It will actually uh, be our tie-in to existing and how we can verify that we tie back into the plans. It is not removed during the project. So we'll take a point, hit every grade break, whenever the grade changes, and we'll just continue along here. you notice the points are closer together when there's more grade change and farther apart when there's less. The next area we'll capture on foot is around the base of these stockpiles. So we'll need to capture enough points to encircle the stockpile and of course any grade changes there. Uh, here it's relatively flat. And these stockpile points will have two purposes. Uh, one is for our site topo and two we'll use them in our stockpile calculations later. So we'll do the same thing here with this fines pile. Next we'll capture a, a couple site features that we need, to, we need to have. So one is a sanitary sewer here. So we'll take that shot and maybe we'll use the label uh, SS for sanitary sewer there. And we also have a water valve over here, a curb stop that we need to record too. So we've got both those down. And now we can jump on the ATV and run in the boundary of the site. So there's a slope that runs down here. So we'll drive the ATV along the base of the slope. And this job site's relatively flat. So we'll set our ATV to auto topo, say every 25 feet uh, it would be enough for a project site like this. Uh, if, if the land is more rolling and there's a lot of grade change, you might have to tighten that up to every 10 feet. Uh, we've even seen them tighter than that. Uh, if you're doing a big farm field that's relatively flat, you may be able to stretch that out to say every 50 or 100 feet. It just really depends on, on how much the, the land changes. So we'll run in that border. We'll come down here just outside our area of concern, our gray box, to make sure we get plenty of data. And notice down here along the tree line, we can't quite capture everything we'd like to get. Uh, you'll just have to topo as close to the tree line as you can get, but still get good, accurate GPS shots. All right, next we're going to run in one line with the four-wheeler right over here along that side edge. And that's just where the transition from the grass to the dirt goes. There's a little bump there that we can't drive the four-wheeler over. So we'll make one pass down there to get that. And then we'll start the bulk data collection for the site. So we'll just run the four-wheeler back and forth, uh, you know, maybe walking speed or a little bit faster, and just capture one line after the other until we get everything going east and west across the job site. When that's done, we can turn and start to run north and south, and we'll run those lines in. Now, one thing you'll notice here is these aren't all perfectly spaced. I mean, we're not looking to be perfect here. We're trying to capture enough data to, uh, to make a 3D model of the job back in the office. So it's more important that you're consistent and do a good job with it than have perfectly spaced grids. Now let's take a look at these stockpiles. So we, uh, when we talked about the commercial site, we went on ahead and ran the rings around the base of the stockpile. And all we did was take points just often enough to capture that circle around the base of the stockpile and any grade changes. And we take those shots at the transition where the material comes into the existing ground. Now let's take a look at the stockpile in the back first. Uh, you'll notice it's a conveyor stockpile. Uh, it's a very even side slopes and consistent. So it'll be pretty simple. Uh, now that the base is done, we'll just go up it and catch a ring around it about where the grade starts to break and change towards the top. So we'll just go ahead and walk that circle and take points every few feet, just like we did in our base, enough to capture the pile. And then we'll go ahead and do one more ring at the top where the grade changes more. So we'll walk along here, we'll capture that dip going down and around the, the, the pile. Then we'll just capture a couple points on top and that's really all we need to, to get good accurate data on that stockpile and determine how much volume is there. It's pretty simple and, and usually just takes a few minutes. This next stockpile, the fines pile, is a little bit more complicated. So we already have the base taken care of and what we'll do next is run that ridge line down the top and just capture several points along there to, uh, to make sure we can represent that back in, the, in, in CAD in the office. Um, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and run this one vertically and we'll just capture up and down some of these big grade changes and lines that, uh, that go around there. So we'll do that several times around here and then of course we'll fill in the backside of the, uh, of the stockpile there and that's all the data we need on that stockpile. So stockpiles are pretty straightforward. Uh, the biggest mistakes we see are people don't get enough base points or maybe they only capture a couple points at the top of the pile and there's no way to model in and figure out what those side slopes are. Uh, this one's straightforward. This one's definitely a lot more complex, and it's more important to, uh, to do a thorough job topoing that if you need good, accurate stockpile volumes. 
Now let's talk a little bit about roads and levees. We'll use a little different uh, survey method to, uh, to topo these. It's called cross sections. So what a cross section is, is surveying across the road uh, at certain intervals. And these intervals uh, can vary depending on how much the road goes up and down. Uh, they could be every maybe 50 or 100 feet on a flatter road, and they can get as close as 5 or 10 feet uh, with a lot of grade change or, or maybe if there's a lot of change in the ditches. Um, here in a minute, we'll talk specifically how to topo this cross section here, and we'll also take a look at an intersection area. Uh, this will be more, uh, this will be similar to the commercial site we did earlier, uh, where it's more of a broad area to topo versus, versus cross sections. So let's talk a little bit about what a cross section is here first. So if I was standing on the center line of the road, uh, you know, looking north and south with this one specifically, and I cut that down in front of me, that would be the, the cross section. So we're going to take a look at how we topo the as-built, the dark line here on this. And we'll start just outside the right-of-way to make sure we get enough data. And then we need to capture each grade break. So we'll get the top of the slope here. And we'll notice this one's a one to three slope, a consistent slope the whole way down. So we only need to capture the bottom of this, uh, the flow line here to get that point, to get that entire slope tied in. Now this one over here is a little bit different as we get closer to the road. We start at a one to three, and then it transitions to a one to four, a little bit flatter as it gets closer to the roadway. So we'll need to take an intermediate shot here to make sure we capture that. Our next point will be at the top of the slope. Uh, we might label that TS for top of slope. And then we'll capture the center of the road, the edge again, the top of slope, the flow line, and on a cross to make sure we get enough points to draw in that cross section. Next, let's take a look at a, a vertical curve down the center line. So if I was standing in the road ditch facing the road in front of me, that vertical curve is in front of me. That's the center line and, and how it bends up and down the, the topography of the land. So again, we'll take points at every grade change. So we've got one here. We've got a transition to, uh, to construction here. And then take a point, notice they get closer together as there's more grade change going down the road. So it's important to get enough here to capture, especially the bottom, that flow line here. And then keep in mind for every one of these, uh, every one of these points, there will be a corresponding cross section taken across the road and through the ditch. Okay, let's take a look at this cross section. And again, uh, serving a levee is very similar to this. Um, you'll capture a lot of the same data, a lot of the same points. So there's our cross section here, and we're going to try to capture the existing topography as represented by this dashed line. So first, we're going to start just outside the edge of this temporary easement. We want to be sure we capture data in the entire working area. All right, so we'll get this one. And then the next grade break over here is right at the edge of the existing roadway, so that will take care of that area. And then we need to take one at the top of the slope. Then when we get down to the bottom of the ditch, it's kind of a wider, flatter ditch, so it's actually going to take two points in here to catch that ditch flow line. Our next point will be at the top of the slope, where it transitions onto the shoulder, and our next one's at the edge of the road. We'll get the center line, and then we'll follow that across and do the same thing on the other side of the road. And that's everything we need to capture that cross section. It's a little easier to visualize down here on the bottom in the, in the street view, if, if that helps. Now let's take a look at the intersection. Uh, we'll use a lot of the same methods that we did back on the commercial site here. So first, we're going to go ahead and topo in this edge of the road. We'll start with a point up here to our last cross section, and then we'll work our way down and capture more points as we go around that curve and any major grade changes along the way. Okay, next, we'll come in and we'll, uh, we'll topo in that edge of the shoulder. Next, we'll have the ditch flow line. Here's the top of the slope. We'll capture another one out here at the edge of the right-of-way. And then we have this long area in here that we need to get a little bit of data on. So we're going to take a couple uh, lines of data here. There might be three or four or five points along each of these, uh, whatever's necessary to, to get, you know, capture what's there. And we have a couple features here on the job site we need to collect. Uh, one is a phone ped and the other is this electric pole. Uh, you'll note there's a street sign and a reflector here. Uh, we don't need to take data on those because they're being removed during the project. So. Keep in mind that, that you only need to collect the data that, that you need to, to get the results you want. You don't have to take a shot on everything there. It might not be necessary. Another important spot here is the culvert flow line at the ditch. So those are always very important points in a road project. They determine where the water flows and, and help tie that topography together, particularly at these intersections. Uh, you need to make sure you capture them on the other side of the road, too. But that's all there is to the intersection, so you'll basically rinse and repeat the same method on these other three corners. 
and uh, then you'll have all the topo data for the intersection and you'll also be able to tie that into your cross sections going up and down the road uh, for the entire project site. Let's step back and take a look at data management one more time in review. So think about why you're topoing, what kind of information you need. Um, are you just trying to measure production over a certain area? Uh, do you need to do an as-built or do you need to capture the entire job site uh, to figure, uh, figure volumes for the entire thing? Uh, always make sure you check into site control and save those points. Uh, I'd suggest setting up a new topo file each day uh, with the date appended to it so you can stay organized. Uh, you only need to shoot grade changes. You don't have to have points just everywhere, just the important spots that will help represent that grade back in the office. Uh, and make sure you label those points. You don't want to get back and find out you have just a bunch of dots on the screen that you're not sure what to do with. So it, it's very important to label the points and make sure anyone can understand what you did that day. And again, with the export, uh, CSV or TXT format is best, um, but uh, most any data company should be able to handle whatever proprietary format you have. Thanks for your time today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on uh, LinkedIn or Instagram. Uh, you can even go old school and, uh, and send me an email. Uh, I'd be happy to hear from you and answer any questions you might have. Uh, thanks and, uh, and good luck with your topos.